All right, good morning, everybody. When you come in, uh, give me some hearts. Say hello. Hey, everybody. Um, from Philly, Minister Krista Williams, RG Hartman, God bless you. Good morning, Apostle Yolanda. Aaron Bailey, good morning to you. Uh, Jakima, I think that is. Aaron, CLV, bless you, man of God. Uh, Just Joy, um, from Kentucky, from Frisco, Texas, North Carolina, Georgia, UK, England. Great, 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 great. Richmond, Bronzeville, awesome. Uh, Rochester, Apostle Mike, I love you. Good morning. Okay, that went too fast. Chi Town, that's an awesome city. Um, Stone Mountain, Georgia, you squinting. Do you wear glasses? I am fighting wearing glasses because something in me is telling me that glasses is a sign of old age. I probably need them though, so pray for me. I believe in God for a miracle. The Dream Maker from Philadelphia, God bless you. And Brock, good morning from Indy. Pastor Josh, love you, uh, Jackson, Florida. Uh, my new member at All Nations, welcome, welcome. Pastor Kendrick, good morning. This should really be of uh, great benefit to you. I'm coming to Chicago for Fire Conference. Awesome. I'm going to do an entire scope about what Fire Conference is very soon. Uh, good morning, Brittany. I was asking about you this morning. Um, I wear glasses since the fifth grade. Uh, I'm fighting it. Please, please pray for me. Miss Maddie, it's so good to see you. I don't think I saw you at church Sunday, and that was certainly a message you needed to hear. So I hope I'll see you next Sunday. Uh, I'm about to give in. I fought glasses too long. Yes, yeah, a conspiracy, man. It's a conspiracy. Uh, good morning from Atlanta. Um, come to Nashville. I don't know if I have anything in Nashville. It's okay to cross over. Old age is not bad. I No. Uh -uh. Who is that? Elder Moore. Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I pray for you. All right. Listen to me. Um, good morning from Baltimore. Um, good to see you. Um, I have something that I need to say uh, that's on my heart this morning. The Holy Spirit woke me up uh, at about three this morning, and that was uh, unusual. I am normally up at five to prepare for my gym time, which, by the way, I'm just leaving, and I've had a great time uh, at the gym. Um, and so I hope that those of you that are that have athletic or physical goals that you are headed there as well. Um, but I want to share something with you, and I'm and this is a a basic. Um, Warning is that a couple uh, a lot of what I'm about to say is going to be very controversial some of you may or may not like it uh, But I will support everything that I have to say with and by the scriptures, but it is more so um, A I live in the gym good stuff. That's a man after my own heart then uh, more so of significance um, particularly because we have come to the end of a year uh, a year that will only become relevant uh, as far as history is concerned. Come on, Pastor Melvin. That's right. Humble yourself. But we will never see the year 2015 again. And if we do, it's going to be uh, by media. and It's going to be chronicled and written on the pages of history. Uh, but we are forging into a season and we are forging into a year that none of us has never seen before. And so everybody, irrespective of what stream or segment of the of the world or or even what tribe in the kingdom, uh, you're feeling the tensions and the pressures of the coming change. And one of the things that we do know is that the winds of change are blowing uh, even if nobody is gauging where they're going, uh, and even if nobody seems to have language for what they're going to achieve. Uh, and so for us, those of us that are present truth, uh, and those of us that believe that God is still very much so actively involved in the affairs of the world, um, we know that whenever change is come and whenever change is imminent and whenever periods of history have come to an end and new things are beginning, uh, that God gets way more vocal, um, the anointing is not passive. The anointing in its nature is very assertive and it is very aggressive and it marks people uh, to achieve things based upon the needs, the the wrestlings, the contentions, the issues, the woundings, the bruisings of, of the day. Uh, and so this morning I woke up with what felt like heart palpitations, but I knew it was a spiritual matter. I wasn't tired, but I felt the visitation of the Lord on me.
and here's why. Um, I really do feel that we need some perspective about our revelatory obligations when seasons change, when years end. Um, I think that it is a, a frivolous thing for many of us, particularly those of us that are with the charismatic persuasion, to go around nonchalantly boasting and being braggadocious and and uh, brutalizing the word prophetic uh, a apart from its ancient obligations and responsibilities. Uh, some of our contemporary speakers are to blame for it. Some of our books are to blame for it. But I think that we have broadened uh, the scope of prophetic responsibility and caused many uh, wrongly motivated neophytes to attach themselves to these terms and uh, shift and dilute their definitions. And so uh, what has happened is we have uh, given... Uh, we have projected, I think is the better way to say it, a very inaccurate, very lightweight presentation of how and what God wanted out of his prophets since the Old Testament. Now, I titled this Periscope, A Biblical Perspective on Prophets and Kings, because here is where we are. Uh, because we are at the close of a year and God is punctuating and God is adjusting and God is doing things and prepping, prepping us uh, to see a day that we have never seen, but the future to God is a thing uh, of the past, even though it's it's yet to be seen and experienced uh, to us. And so because we are coming into the future, there is no way to adequately manage the issues, the cycles, the things that are waiting for us without strongly, uh, 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 I'm looking for the right word, wise, seasoned, tempered, reliable, trustworthy, prophetic voices. And I know this seems like a consistent soapbox of mine, but I, I mean, you just got to deal with it because my Bible tells me that God has always, Amos 3, 7, surely the Lord God doeth nothing, no thing in the earth, except he revealeth his secrets to the servants, the prophets. Now I am, uh, I consider myself a political person. I feel that a large part of my destiny is governmental in nature. I do know that there's going to come a day and there's going to come a time where the sphere of government will probably be uh, one of the areas in the world that I use a lot of my uh, gifts. However, uh, in this season in my life, I am more committed uh, to broadcasting, advocating, and, and interpreting the divine purpose and counsel of God, rather than I am siding with, advocating for, or even endorsing one particular political advocate or candidate. Now, why is this important to you? Because I believe that you as a believer, whether you are prophetic or not, whatever you call yourself or not, as a believer, you ought to be interested in, in reading the signs of the times, and you ought to also be interested in being able to know what God has planned for your city, for your nation, and you also need to be responsible uh, from a prayer and an intercessory level about uh, what interferences, intrusions, and invasions that Satan has set to obstruct what God is trying to do. Now, here is where the controversy comes in, and this is where a lot of you people are going to get upset. My Bible tells me, I don't care what the American Constitution says, well, I do, but in this context, it's non-relevant, that there is no president, okay, I'm going to say this, in the world that has more spiritual power or spiritual authority, or spiritual responsibility, or spiritual obligation. There is not a king over any nation, kingdom, or empire that supersedes the prophets uh, with regard to their ability and their connection to God. Now, we are all 
on this roller coaster ride back and forth in this media war. And I get it. It's important. Uh, from a natural perspective, I also believe in hearing political candidates and what they're going to do. But God in the Bible, the way he installed kings into power was by and through the prophetic voice. So while many of us are breaking covenant and fighting each other and then becoming just doing all kinds of stuff because of our uh, choices and our beliefs and our sightings politically. I think if we're going to fight, I think if we're going to have a broadcast, it need not be just over who's going to be the next president. It should be about who our prophets are. Because in the Old Testament, the, when the kings or the democratic system was put in place, it was done by a prophet by the name of Samuel. And so every king, no matter what the spectrum of their authority was, no matter what the, the level of their authority was, there was only one person more superior than that king, elected or not, and that was the prophet. Why? Because although that king had military and economic and civil and social responsibilities, there was only one voice that could go directly into the courts of God, hear his mind on a matter, and then judge a king when was necessary. So I don't think that the that the, the most premier argument, it should be an argument. Let me clarify that, okay? I have covenant brothers that are actively engaged on the political front that I am supporting, that I am pushing, but I'm going to tell you my role in it. I I am strictly a prophet of God. So my objectives are going to be a little different from your average pastor or your typical Christian representative. My obligations and the spectrum of my responsibilities don't necessarily include the interests and the representations of people because for most in my mouth are the interests and the, and the representation of the living God. And so because of that, I only have one side and it's righteousness. And so I think think that we've got to have the fear of the Lord. Uh, those of us that are intercessors or seers or prophets of God that yesterday I began to tell you about how I was burdened about national prophetic voices because I think the conversation is distracted right now. I don't think it's a conversation between red or blue. I don't think it's a conversation between pro-life and pro-choice. I don't think it's a conversation between gay marriage or traditional marriage. I don't think it's a conversation about Democratic or Republican. The real conversation needs to be who has deceived us and who carries the power and who carries the weight to validate these prophetic vessels to see whether they be of God or not. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. Because we don't have legitimate, seasoned, professional prophets, we think that everybody who uh, walks around toting a Bible or rehearsing a scripture or says that they had a background in church is the person that God's side is on. But my Bible tells me that God would often and use pagans to push his purposes. So there are people that God may anoint for a specific season in history and they will still die and go to hell. So my discernment is not going to be distracted because some presidential or political candidate says, I grew up in the church or I have Christian values. None of that matters. I want to know who the oil is on to shift this period in history to carry America into her future. Many of you see me with this American shirt on um, and I want you to know that I was just burdened today to wear America on my chest uh, like the priest of old. They would wear ephods where they would carry uh, 12 stones upon them represent, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. I am concerned about revival in America. And so I want to really just clarify it that the, the president of the United States, irrespective of who he may be or who he's going to be, does not outrank, does not outgovern people that God is called to stand in prophetic office because they have a limitation and they have a weakness. They may have the Senate, they may have the House, they may have the signatures, they may be the chief uh, 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 in command, but there's one thing they can't do and that's know the future and that's one person they don't have unlimited interaction with and that's the God of heaven and earth. And so I want to just focus the body of Christ. I, I believe in those of, of my friends that are advocates 
advocating and those are my friends that are counseling. In fact, I'm praying for all of them. But I'm going to tell you my role in this. My role in this is to circumcise my ears to find out who is God's man for this hour. So I don't want you people, particularly in the African-American persuasion or you people who think that God is only uh, in, in Republican interest for my fellow prayer movement people out in Kansas City and all of y'all. But I, I will say this. I want you to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches and then align your beliefs and your propagandas accordingly because something imminent has come to America. Something imminent has come to Chicago. And if we distract ourselves and if we get ourselves immersed in what the heathen should be immersed in, we will miss the mind of God on the matter. The mind of God that God has an opinion about education. He has an opinion about uh, the mistreatment and the injustice of all minorities, African Americans, women. Uh, he has a uh, he has an opinion about the overtaxing uh, of, of 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 different parties. God has an opinion on all of it. But I want us to just set the record straight. Who we vote in office is going to be important, but the body needs to have a conversation about who we believe to be prophets and are not. We need to have a conversation about who is representing the issues of God to America and who moves in such prophetic weight and prophetic clout that their words can be confirmed with signs and wonders and supernatural activity that will bring whoever is in political office to fear. You know what our real problem is? It's not just inappropriate uh, uh, or, 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 or unskillful or, uh, uh, or veteran politicians. Our problem is the people that are going around calling themselves our prophets clearly are not. Because if we had half as many prophets in America as we think we do, there is no way we would have lost the spiritual helm of this country on our watch. It makes no sense. It should not be that you people are uh, running around every prayer breakfast and every conference in the world because you didn't seen a few pictures of monkeys and bananas telling people you a prophet or a prophetess and yet we lost the nation. There was no guard. There was no garrison. There was no revelatory monitoring. There was no prophetic policing. There was no surveillance that forbade the riots and the contentions and all of that stuff that's going on. And so what I want you to realize is that we've got to have the fear of the Lord when we are hearing and heeding to people who say they have heard from the Lord and who say that they know the mind of God and who say that they have heard God speak concerning what's coming to pass. Because whenever there is a close of a season, God starts sensitizing his prophets. He starts speaking to his prophets. He starts letting his, letting his prophets know what his mind and what his intention are. You people are walking around wrapped in and prayer cloths and throwing oil and, and laying on prayer requests and doing everything but going into the chambers to hear God's mind on who he is anointed to reign in this nation. And so if a wicked man gets in leadership over America. It may or may not be because we didn't vote. It may be because the people we are relying on to be God's mouthpieces are liars and they should not get the rights to just randomly and arbitrarily invade our churches and invade our conferences and force us to believe that they are God's prophets with no real measurement of their regulatory acumen, their regulatory responsibility. We need real prophets in this hour. So yeah, I'm burdened because I don't think that the most important office in America is the office of the president. My Bible tells me in Ephesians 2 and 20 that the church was built upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets and somehow in the dark ages when the bishops decided they was going to hijack us, we went from being built upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets and the, and the, and the maintenance gifts somehow robbed the movement gifts and we got tossed into the hands of pastors and teachers. But until apostles and prophets have done their jobs, pastors and teachers very frankly don't have nothing to do. So whenever the church is built upon the foundation of pastors and teachers, you're going to have people that only know how to maintain. But you won't see much movement. You won't see much momentum. You won't see much conflict because apostles and prophets' strongest anointings are not people-centered. They are anointed to deal with the deities that are covering entire people groups, entire 
other areas. So no wonder our churches look like they look. They were built by gifts that came much later in the spectrum that didn't have a job if it weren't for apostles and prophets. The only reason pastors and teachers have something to do is because apostles and prophets have laid the foundation by their revelation and given a context for the shepherd and a context for the didactic and a context for those that are supposed to nurture. But when the nurturer becomes the founder and when the and the maintainer becomes the establishmentarian, then what we have is a is a church that is impotent and not really ability to handle the constructs and to handle the structures that are supposed to give us the future. That's what uh, this generation is crying out. Th this is bigger than just political fraudulence and the rights and privileges and the brutalization of the American Constitution. What is really, and I want you to hear this, this is what God is saying to you, what is really under attack in, a na in this nation is the future. It's abortion, but it's bigger than abortion. It's poverty, but it's bigger than poverty. It's black lives, but it's bigger than black lives. What is under attack in America right now is the future. And because the church dropped the future, because they were so bound with their petty people level issues, and they didn't want to hear preachers who knew the future, they preferred to give their lives and their stewardship over to life coaches and singles experts. Because they dropped the future, the devil picked it up and put it in the mouths of psychics and witches and warlocks because we were disinterested in the voices that could articulate and interpret and broadcast the future from God's world to ours. So there are anointings that are being raised up right now that are live streaming details and live streaming events as they have occurred in God's world and they are being given counsel and they are being given influence and they are being given place in this world because what God is out to protect is the future. Yes, God loves black lives. He loves white lives. He loves single lives. He loves gay lives. He loves straight lives. But what God is protecting in this hour is the future. He is protecting his plans. He is protecting his purposes. And my burden for America, my burden for Chicago is these old frail prophetic demonstrations have made us abort God's purposes for the future. And so we have started to customize it. We have started to perpetrate it. We have started to dilute it. And now we're making it up as it go along. So here is the word of the Lord. The man that God has ordained to lead this nation, we're going to begin to see much clearly. And I do believe I know who God has anointed for this next season in America. I'm going to say it and I'm going to let the body of Christ know uh, probably in January. I don't have a release to do it now as I am still in prayer. But I do want to say this. If God's anointed does not reign in place, it will not be the fault of a political process. It will be the fault of a prayerless, blind uh, uh, church who has no real voice and no real understanding of our role in broadcasting and undergirding and supporting and yes voting for and yes believing God for whoever is anointed there is a chance that the one that don't have the oil may reign and because they may reign it may be because the, of the wickedness not of the world but of the church so I just want to set the record straight in the Bible the president was not the highest office in the Old Testament of the Old Testament world was God's prophets it was not them kings. When you when 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 Prophet Samuel came into town, my Bible says that the elders of the city, which would be the equivalent of our House of Representatives or our senators, the elders of the city saw this man coming in the gates and they were so afraid because they didn't know what he was going to do. They didn't know what he was going to say. But what they did know is that his God was the God of heaven and that if he said something, it would be more than just some fancy pants word that would predict a weather pattern here or there. But there would be signs and there would be wonders and creation would respond to whatever that prophet said. So the real issue is not just who's going to be the next president. The real issue is who is broadcasting God's word and can prove it. So yes, there is a greater responsibility from the, the people, the man, the woman that has heard from the Lord and has known his mind and has known his word and can release that on the planet. No, I won't be checking my FB messages. But to release God's world and release God's mind on the planet. 
to be able to prepare the body of Christ for where they're going and for what should be done and for who is wicked and so and, and so that we will know how to move for the future because that is the role that is the role of this next president it is not just uh, the issue of the national debt it is not just uh, war order and I do I am prophesy that America is going into a time of war uh, but it is it's gonna be bigger than that whoever is going to be the next president has the responsibility to appropriate to manage and to steward the resources that God is releasing for the future that's their responsibility is the future is the evolution the progress and the movement and the advancement and the gentrification of cities neighborhoods and ultimately generation this person will have the responsibility of guarding events in history as they were planned in God's world so while we're paying attention to CNN and while we're getting mad uh, about who's doing what and while we are angry and while we are brutalizing preachers and while we are getting distracted and all of the earth level stuff, somebody's got a satellite, what has been said from God's world, and it is, let me say this, it is past time that we hold these people accountable that insist on being called prophets and prophetess. We have got to hold these people accountable. If you are on here and you are running around here with a website and a bio and a business card talking about you somebody's prophet, prove it! I'm sorry for yelling. But if you are, you owe us a full report. You owe us a report on what God is doing in this nation. You owe us a report on what gods have intruded themselves, what gods have intruded themselves by the means of false religions. You owe us a full report. If you are calling yourself a prophet and the extent and scope of your prophetic responsibilities is prophecy tricks on Sundays to make sure that the people on the same row are impressed by your ability to squinch and squeeze and squeal you are living beneath your your rights and your roles and you are not doing your jobs you need to be rebuked prove it this nation needs the eyes and the ears more now than ever before jeremiah called y'all dumb dogs who couldn't bark because they have not heard a warning. Ezekiel said if watchmen don't make clear sounds, not these old ambiguous rumble rumble prophecies that don't make sense, that leave folk more confused than what they were, you know, than what you came and speak. If you are the mouthpiece of God, do your job. We don't need any more sanctified soothsayers or Pentecostal psychics or worshiping wizards. What we need is real prophets in this hour. We don't need clouds without rain. We need men like Elijah, like Ezekiel, like Samuel, like Isaiah. We need telescopic prophets that have seen centuries ahead from now and can tell us today what the future has in store and align us so we don't miss what God is doing in our world. So, you know, I feel like Jeremiah today, my heart is, is, is burning a flame within me. I mean, because the prophets are like dead men's bones. We're running around here like schizophrenics, gyrating and jittering all over the people and chest bumping people on reality TV. And yet we have nothing to say from God's world that's beyond a poet or that's beyond a life coach or that's beyond a, 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 a 800 operator for that matter. Where in the world have all the prophets gone? All right. Now that's all I have to say about that. We need the prophets. So, again, I'm telling you today, I want you guys to pray for national prophets. Pray for them. Pray that they are not under attack. Pray that they are sanctified in holiness. Pray that they come out of the caves. Pray that they are not, you know, because a Bible is prophet is a diviner. Pray that they consume the role, the scroll like Ezekiel. Pray that God begins to polish them like Daniel. Pray that God gives them the right influence. Pray that God, the God of the prophets, pray that the God of the prophets have access into multiple streams. We don't just need prophets to be circular 
circulating around the charismatic circuits. We need prophets that have the favor uh, of, of the word of faith movement. There's got to be a marriage between the prophetic movement and the word of faith. The church of God in Christ needs her prophets right now. Prophets have not really lasted in, her, in the great church, but we've got to pray that the prophets of God even be sent to the church of God in Christ. And I know this may make you mad, but I'm going to say it anyway. Now, I feel like the founder of the church of God in Christ, uh, who is an apostle of the Lord Jesus, C.H. Mason, is probably rolling in his grave because of the legacy and the kingdom inheritance he built with signs and wonders and deliverance, only to see what he's built centuries later look like a drag fest and look like RuPaul's uh, uh, a festival of flesh and perversion. There is no deliverance in the casting out of devils. There are no signs and wonders at these convocations. I'm not bashing the church of God in Christ. She has a rich history, but I'm telling you the reason she lost her place is that there were no prophets left behind to guard what that apostle came and to build. I believe the, P the PAW needs prophets. I believe the Assemblies of God, has, uh, they need the prophets. I, I, I don't think they should be hiding their Pentecostal nature, scared to worship, scared to speak in tongues, walking around with, with acoustic guitars that won't break their back and ruin their services, being suburb. I believe the assemblies of God needs the prophets and I don't think they need to call them messengers and inspired speakers I believe they need to call them what the Bible calls them G prophets of God I believe God is calling prophets out of retirement the AME they need the prophets of God I believe something is happening even in the African American Episcopal Church where the prophets are going to begin to stir from under the muck and the mire of their ethnic allegiances and they're going to begin to hear and be visited by the God of heaven we need the prophets Prophets. We got enough good preachers. Nobody knows the mind of God and it can help us see the calendar of heaven and help us know what's going to transpire when. It is so important because if we don't have prophets, we are ill prepared and we are under equipped and we are under equipped and we are left vulnerable and we are left susceptible to the sways of hell. And we've got to believe God to continually save us according to mercy because without the prophets, there can be no might. But the Bible says that we are the congregation of the mighty and we need the mantles of might released upon the planet. Those that have eyes and ears and can predict what heaven is doing, that can tap into what hell is doing and can help us to move into the right selection processes of those that are supposed to protect our future, which is going to be the responsibility of this next president. So that is my soapbox for today. I'm just sick of it. Uh, so we are praying for the prophets of God. Um, uh, I want you to pray for them. Make a prayer list of prophets that you are praying for prophets that are national prophets. I'm not just talking about local itinerant, you know, oracles that, you know, gives a couple of words here and there. I'm talking about governmental prophets, the most rare kind, those that have the responsibility of hearing for the nation, of releasing and predicting to the nation. We are praying for them. My heart was grieved this morning about those that have disappeared, that have just gone in hiding because of discouragement and their children coming attack and sickness hitting their bodies and all kinds of attacks. We need the prophets of God. We need the prophets of God that have not matured enough to be able to handle national uh, 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 prominence, to grow up, to get in houses that can shape them, to get in houses that can sculpt them. We need God's prophets. So I'm not overemphasizing them. I don't think that half the people that say they prophets, even on my periscope, I don't believe you. But I do believe that there are some out there. There's got to be 700, some 7,000 somewhere that has not bowed their knee to bail. I'm believing God to raise them up. And I'm believing God to give them access. And I'm believing God to give them favor and to give them prophetic relationships and prophetic opportunities and to heighten their discernment and to give them might and authority. I'm believing God to release the prophets in this hour. I'm believing God for schools and consortiums of prophets and teams of prophets and whole colleges of prophets. That's what happened when, 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 Seth, when Saul came amongst the company of the prophets, he changed. That's how I know those preachers, and I'm not bad them that met with Donald Trump. I'm not bashing him. I'm saying that their objective was not to bring that man into an environment where his heart could be changed because they walking around like Elma Fudd trying to describe what's happening. But when Saul came into the company of the prophets, my Bible tells me when he left them, he was made a different man. That brother is exactly the same. So you've got to wonder 
what the real motivation was or whether or not while all of the preachers and Amarosa was gathered, I mean, who's a darn, uh, 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 what do you call that lady? All of a sudden she's a Baptist preacher, but she's a, uh, 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 what do you call that? Uh, a, a reality TV star, but now she's the counsel of somebody coming to the president. It's witchcraft. The spirit of Jezebel. My problem is you ought not call a meeting with the prophets with, 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 or you ought, you ought not call a meeting with somebody who's going to be the next political candidate and not have a prophet in the midst of you. It ought not be. It's bad enough that y'all churches ain't got prophets. Why in the world would you call a meeting with Donald Trump who's supposed to who's who's contending for the nation's highest position and not have a prophetic voice in the midst of them? Folk that couldn't prophesy or and couldn't bust a, 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 a grape in a fruit fight where are the prophets they called that man in that meeting so that they could get their names remembered so that hopefully they could get a, a grant or some type of handout or some type of and now and there were real voices there that used to be prophetic that used to be intercessors but they dropped that stuff to help people find success because it takes a while for prayer to prosper you it takes a while for intercessory a uh, 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 commitment and ministry to, to bring you into wealth and when when voices get tired of warfare and they get tired of the of the season of obscurity they drop their mantles to become coaches and dream architects and people we need the prophets to return to their place so for some of you it's a rebuke and for others of you it's a charge so we're the prophets <laughs> so yeah i guess this elijah thing is on me today but we need daniels and samuels and we need nathans Nathan's that may not be as brash as somebody like me, but can move in a favor with high level political voices and uncover secret things that are going in in their world. So we are praying for national prophets. I'm praying for prophets that have got caught up with mystics and with false prophets and then sold a self out to get prophetic outlets. I'm praying for prophets that have dropped their mantle to be liked on TBN. Now I'm not shading TBN. I love Jan Crouch. If it wasn't for Jan Crouch, I probably wouldn't be filled with the Holy Ghost. So I love it. I think the word network is great, but I don't want prophets of God to drop their mantle to become the next poster boy for this old watery Christian television and lose their potency and lose their strength. You need to be rebuked. Don't you let these people make you some light wood, weight prophet. Kearney Thomas ain't nobody's prophet. I don't even think that man is saved. I, I don't want y'all to drop your mantles because you're so rejected and you can't wait to be famous. Be true to who God has called you to be and move in the potency that the Lord wants you to move in because we need the prophets in this hour more now than ever before. Not Peter Popoff, not Kearney Thomas, not none of these folks selling you sand from Israel. None of them. We need the prophets. Because truth be told, if we had real prophets, people like that wouldn't last on TV. If Paul walked up on somebody like some of these brothers, they'd be blind. Paul would blind them. Some of these folk would drop dead. Their limbs would fall off, playing around with the power of God to pay bills. Anyway, so we need the prophets. I'm saying it strongly, but in love. So we're praying for uh, Prophet Connie Wilson, that the Lord removes her from wrong relationships and put her in right relationships. She's a real prophetess of God. Connie Williams. We're praying for Francina Norman. We're praying for Kevin Leal. We're praying for Brian Kahn. We'll believe in God, that God gets victory in his life and uses his life for the glory of God. We're praying for Jonathan Ferguson, a real prophet of God. I believe a modern Elijah. We're praying for Sherman Dumas and Faith Wacoma. We're praying for Pam Vanette, that whatever Satan has tried to done to bully her and intimidate her and close her doors. We're praying. Bring them to the forefront. Revive these mantles again. We're praying for Kevin Leo that any assault on his body would be reversed in Jesus' name. We need that man of God. We He's not done. We are praying for Kim Clement that the spirit of death not take him out of here. We're praying for them. We're praying for Cindy Jacobs, and a, a, a prophet of God to nations. We're praying for these people. We want God. We're praying for Todd Hall. We're praying for Todd Hall and the stream and the influence that God is giving him. We are believing God for these people. 
Good, googly muggly. Give me a prophet you're praying for. Michelle McLean Walters is definitely one of them. We're praying for my sister, Prophet Michelle, that the Lord opens up doors for her life. We're praying for Matthew Stevenson. Please do. God is calling me to infect several streams around the world, like smoke under a door. God is calling me in a prophetic voice to a lot of different worlds. So we're praying for them in Jesus' name. We're praying for a lot of these prophets of God. Tell me a prophet you're praying for. Keisha Cephas, that's right, we're praying for them. We're praying for Joseph McCargo. We're praying, yeah, Sean Bolts definitely needs some prayer. We're praying for Sean Bolts. We're praying for Mary Crum. We are not praying for Manasseh Jordan. We're praying for Kiva Alexander. We're praying for, for, for Herbert Angel. We're praying for Anna Maldonado. Come on, we're praying for them. We're praying for all of them. We are praying for them. Come on, raise them up. Catherine Sykes, we're praying for them. In the name of Jesus, lift them, lift them, lift them. Gabriel Hobson, come on. TB Joshua, we're praying. Signs and wonders, signs and wonders. We're praying. We need dreaming prophets. We need prophets who interpret dreams. We lost, uh, we lost. Uh, 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 John Paul Jackson to premature death. We don't need no more prophets to die. He was our he was our contemporary Daniel. We need a new John Paul Jackson, guys. We're praying for them. Come on, we're praying for singing prophets. We need Ryan Booker. We need we need the prophets to begin to come with the word of the Lord. We're praying for Jane Hammond and Norma Barrero. Come on, we're praying for them. We're praying for them. Glory to God. There's a man. I'm seeing his face. Uh, I can't um, remember his name. Uh, what is this? B. Dwayne Harden in Atlanta. We're praying for him. We're praying for him that the assault on his life and rep representation would be broken in Jesus' name. We're praying for them. Come on. We're praying for the prophets. Pray for them. Travis Green. We're praying for him. A, a musical, a prophetic psalmist. Mark Driscoll. Uh, Leon Timber. We're praying for them. We're praying for them. Mildred Harris. We're praying for them. Let the prophets come. Let the prophets come. Let the prophets be released. We're praying for Bishop Hammond. We're praying for them. We're praying for them. Come on. So keep praying for the prophets. Let them go around the world. Kathy, Kathy Lechner. Yes, we're praying for them. Tom and Jane Hammond. We're praying for them. Danny Bonilla. We're praying for them. Uh, we're praying for them. Um, I keep seeing faces and I don't... Terry Chris. He was a powerful prophet of God in the 90s who dropped the prophetic mantle and went user-friendly. We're praying for Terry Chris that the dealings of God would be upon him. He's now a part of the Hillsong family, but we need that man to return back to where God called him. We're praying for Sharon Stone, a prophet of God in UK. We're praying for them in Jesus' name. That's right, Todd Hall. We're believing God that their greatest moment has come. We're praying for the prophets in Jesus' name. Uh, I love y'all. I got to go. I'm stirred up. Keep praying for prophets. Go and make a list of prophetic voices you're praying for. And let's put it in circulation for them to come where they need to be. All right. I love y'all. I'm praying for y'all. All right. Bye.